After Space Mama has been brutally murdered, it's time to move on to the penultimate area, the Cave of Shit, Air uh, Scops. By this point, I'm fucking haggard, okay? Space Mama made me go insane. I was yelling COMPLETE, COMPLETE, for like four months or ten months or how long has it been? It's been quite a while. But you know what? I'm still saying it! COMPLETE, COMPLETE, COMPLETE SHIT! You know, I thought after Picture City that was it. I had never even heard of the Cave of Scops, nor had I ever considered that this area of the map was a whole new zone. I mean, I figured Eater Joe's was like a special stage for a minigame or something. It always seemed out of place, but now I see. It is part of the Cave of Scops, which is full of spikes and death and I don't like it and it sucks. Ow! Oh. Hey, here's the thing I just noticed. All my cages return to zero in areas where I haven't collected all of them when I load from a password. I guess the password system isn't advanced enough to account for three out of seven or whatever, but it doesn't make that clear anywhere. This is the biggest disadvantage of using the passwords, and if I hadn't cheated all that time ago, I'd still be using my memory card and wouldn't have this problem. But fuck it, I don't care about the cages, I can collect them later. I've never been too fussed with completing a game 100% anyway, so... No bother, no wobble about it, nothing will go wrong. The Cave of Scops levels have nothing new to mention apart from the last level of Eat At Joe's, which is like a beach party or something. Joe is an alien boy. Alien boy! Who has no electricity at his bar. Okay, you ride on some thingies, flip the power switch, and then come back. Which is the first time one of these levels has been about doing a task, rather than simply progressing forward. In celebration for having the power turned back on, Joe released the beach balls all over the nearby lake and said, Go. And I'm like, excuse me? The beach balls are so difficult to ride. Unlike the plums, they don't magically travel across the water in the direction you're facing. They just bob up and down like real things. And you need to rely on the local fish to punt you forwards. Very slowly. Which results in some of the most counterintuitively difficult jumps in the entire game. Cast your eyes upon this shit. You have to jump preemptively, but not too preemptively, because you'll outrun the ball. It looks like there's a stupidly small window of opportunity to do it correctly, but in actuality, you can stand on the side air of the beach ball and jump later. That's some side air bullshit! This game's a bunch of stupid, bumpy, conky, funky bunch. If you know what I'm saying. This is something that ruins a lot of platformers for me. When this is considered safe, you're never quite sure what you're able to land on. What's the point of having sprites if they don't accurately reflect the game world? Makes me so angry! You can get used to it after a couple jumps, though there's always that anxiety on whether you're about to land on side air or real air. Also in this level are the piranhas. They jump up and bite you at a certain distance away. If you get hit, you're dead. These fucking piranhas are the bane of my existence. The fact that they actually patrol a specific area back and forth makes it so much more stressful because when Rayman turns around, the whole screen moves to show what he can see. But when I'm waiting for the piranha to make another pass, I can't look ahead to see where I should jump, and a lot of these jumps are very stressful as it is because of the sideball air conundrum, and having to worry about the piranhas on top of that results in GAY SHIT! I've since found out you can punch them in the teeth to kill them, making this whole section a lot easier. Okay, it's time to talk about the hardest boss in their game, Mr. Scops. Not the last boss, but it is the hardest. This boss has many phases. Phase 1 sees you jumping over Scops' claw as the platforms underneath you slowly fall away. At first it seems like there was a pattern to when they fall, but there isn't. You just gotta be on your toes every fucking time. Now, like most sensible people, I panicked and had no idea what the fuck to do for the first few attempts. I then noticed this ting down here. The only way to get it would be to hang from the edge, so I assumed that's what needed to be done, but it, god fucking damn it! It's yet more side air bullshit. It's so very easy to over and undershoot landing on this ledge, and it's apparently not possible to jump from the platform as it's falling in order to ensure that you grab the ledge, because uh, I don't fucking know. Jumping straight up and falling down usually results in me standing on the ledge. Once again, Hippocrite has balked the script and recorded something that isn't even real. So I must step in once again to replace his wrong voice. I am a mere mammoth of a man. The world trembles when I'm shaking in my boots. I am also very mysterious. 
In this part you have to simply walk off the edge and turn around really fast to grab hold. It's not even difficult, but Hippocrit insists that it's really hard even though he recorded gameplay footage of himself doing exactly this. What a stupid retarded idiot. I can't get over how very precise and accurate you need to be to do this consistently when the entire game has such vague hitboxes. What is this? Brain surgery? Ah uh, yes, this uh, this reminds me of Rayman 1. Then Scops tries to shake you off by smashing the floor, so you gotta jump up again and then grab onto the ledge immediately to avoid being stricken down into the hellfire. After that, he does it again, and then again. After a couple more, he starts running away because the whole platform starts sinking. And then you run and you jump and you jump and you run, I don't fucking know, you get to the end, it's easy, it's baby shit. The battle hasn't even begun to get difficult yet. Once you touch the end of the level sign, the battle really begins. Now, up to this point, you haven't been able to damage Scops with punches, if you even attempted that. So in order to damage him, you've got to use <coughs> something else. Specifically, his blue shooty things that he shoots. These projectiles have momentum to them and gravitate towards Rayman. The idea is to dodge them as they fly out at you, and then dodge them again as they fly back into Mr. Scops' face, thereby giving him a boo-boo. Neat idea. HORRIBLE EXECUTION! To say that this shit is crud, would not even begin to start giving you the information on what I mean. To start giving you information on what I mean, I need to break down how this projectile behaves, because it seems random, and it almost is. The projectiles don't have a set firing speed. You would think the challenge would be learning where you should stand in order to have the easiest time dodging them over and over. See, Mr. Scops takes up the majority of the screen, as you can see. So the space you have to maneuver is very small, and the time you have to react to the projectiles is very short. Observing and memorizing the speed of the projectiles and exactly when they appear and timing your button presses accordingly should be the challenge here. It should be, but as I mentioned, the projectiles here don't have set firing speeds. They could come out at seemingly any speed, which carries with it a whole lot of complications. Firstly, the projectiles gravitate towards Rayman. It wouldn't be correct to say that they home in on Rayman, they gravitate, like how a moon orbits a planet. The faster the projectile is traveling, the more difficult it is to turn. If it's moving very fast, it's basically going in a straight line, and you can jump over it quite easily. But if it's going very slowly, it can turn on a dime, and if you jump over it, it will just come up from beneath you and hit you. The challenge that is presented in this boss fight is one of chance and inhuman reflexes. You have to guess what sort of projectile will be fired, and act accordingly pretty preemptively in order to dodge it with a modicum of reliability. Not only do you have to be fast to react, but you have to have perfect positioning. Since the projectiles gravitate towards Rayman, your relative position has a constant effect on their trajectory. Trajectory. Tra trajectory. 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 Fuck! If you're too close or too far from Scops' stinger when he fires, you may be unable to dodge out of the way entirely. One thing I had to come to terms with is that in order to dodge correctly and reliably, you may have to give up on damaging Scops with the same projectile. Staying alive is much more important and much more difficult than dealing damage. Sometimes, you just have to dodge three or four attacks without making any progress, and that's just how it is. You know, that's another thing entirely, figuring out how to hit Scops. It seems simple enough, but a lot of the time the projectiles lose momentum right as they're about to hit him. Sometimes simply not getting hit isn't good enough. You need to plan for how to finish a dodge, as well as when to start one. Say a fireball is coming back after flying off screen. If you jump over it in the direction of the ball, you'll be okay, but the ball will gain some extra momentum upwards, which would curve it away from Mr. Scops. If you stand still and jump, it may curve up into you if it's going slow enough, which means you'll get hurt, and that's bad. So what you need to do is to walk towards Mr. Scops, get as close as possible to his face without hurting yourself, and then jump over the projectile just before it's about to hit you, and then it will hit him. And that is what you have to do every time, for like 13 times, and you have 3 health, and you can't be hit, and it's so fucking too hard. <laughs> it's a lot of physics and rocket science, and it took me ages to get the hang of it, and I still don't have the hang of it. But after a couple hours and trillions of deaths, I got lucky enough to get Scops down to 1 health left. And then he decided to walk forwards and trap and snare me.
Oh, okay, I did it. I just have to have two health at this exact moment, otherwise I would have died. That's another stipulation for his fight. Don't lose more than one health at any point. Okay. It's done. I did it. Hmm? Where's the next level? I want to go to the next area. I need to beat Mr. Dark. I can see him. He's right there. What do I, what do I do? It was at this moment that I got all kinds of not good feelings. Feelings such as terror, abandonment, pressure, suspense, chest pains, and many more culminating in the following expulsion of dialogue. You are a real, we are a real, we are a real, we are a real, You've got to get all the cages. Yep. All the cages to fight the final boss at the end of the game. This is where the tragedy of my password situation truly comes to light. Since using the password system resets any level where I didn't collect all the cages, I, at this moment in time, have none. Not able to get to the last boss, not able to win the game. This is where most people would resign themselves to the fact that they ain't gonna fucking finish this game. You may be thinking, I could just cheat again, use passwords to get all the cages. Look, there it is, you're, you're set, no worries, there's the cheat. Well, unfortunately, I'm English, and I have the PAL version of the game, and for one reason or another, the PAL version does not have the same cheats as the NTSC version. Namely, the cheat that gets all the cages and sets me up to fight the final boss. That one doesn't exist, but what does work is a cheat for all the levels and all the cages, except Mr. Scott's. Once more I am forced to intervene. Hippo for some reason believed that there was no cheat available in the PAL version of the game that unlocked the final level, but there was. Right here. It appears in his delirium of playing Rayman for goodness knows how many hours he just didn't notice it. He then wrote the whole script, recorded the audio, and edited this very video without realizing, making this next part of the video very embarrassing. Tee hee. So, the choice was between playing every stage over again to collect all the cages, but no bosses, or use a cheat, redo none of the levels, and fight Mr. Scops one more time. I replayed every stage. I didn't bother filming it though, because I don't have a 3 trillion terabyte hard drive with which to store the amount of footage that would have been created from the many hours of playing the game that I would have had to do. To do that. So you'll have to take my word that actually you don't have to take my word because I have proof in the form of this stack of sticky notes that I was using to write down the passwords as I went through the game and completed each area. You can try all these passwords at home if you have a PAL version of Rayman on PS1. They should all work except the ones that I crossed out. I'll get to those later. And so begins my playing the game again. Here's the song of me getting the cages but I don't have footage to read the thing there's just a montage without footage. It's a black screen. It's a black screen. Part of the difficulty in this was just knowing where the cages were and how to get to them. There are quite a lot that require you to take a specific path, and if you miss your chance, you can't go back and try again until you beat the whole set of levels. So to make sure I wasn't wasting more time than I needed to, I used this site that explained where to find all the crates. The site was just what I needed. It had locations for every crate in the game with a tiny little map so you could just understand where things were in relation to everything else. The problem was the site only showed locations for the crates in the PC version, not the place version, and there are minor differences all throughout. So when the information isn't available in image form, I have to resort to watching Let's Plays, and by Odin, it's hard to find a good one. I'm not talking about good quality commentary or anything like that, I mean it's hard to find one that shows me what I need. You see, nearly every Rayman playthrough is exactly the same. They play through the whole game and casually collect cages when they get them, and then at the very end they go back and find all the ones they've missed so they can fight the last boss, just like I'm doing. But I'm looking for very specific cages. Cages that the player may not find on their first pass through an area, so I have to wade through hours and hours of stuff that doesn't help me at all. 
It's not like I know vaguely where the cages are. Every area has multiple levels and cages could be on any of those levels. So I have to watch them play through all the levels in an area before I can confirm that they didn't find the crate I'm looking for. And I can't skip to the end of their playthrough and watch them collect all the crates they missed their first time around because they may have already found the crate I was looking for. So I just have to watch both, the whole playthrough and then the end of their playthrough. I have to watch everything. And let me tell you, nothing is worse than watching YouTube videos. The moral of this story is to make sure you use the save feature if you want to play Rayman all the way through. Do not use passwords, you fucking dumb fuck. You know, we're not even done. These fucking passwords don't even work sometimes. There are many instances of me completing an area, writing down the password, and then reloading with that password only to have it not work, and then I have to do everything all over again. And I made absolutely sure, absolutely sure, I wasn't making a mistake. I studied the text for fucking many minutes. By the way, before I move on, I want you to know that there's a cage in Allegro Presto that's high up on a platform, and reaching this platform requires a huge amount of momentum on these slippy slippies, and a very accurate jump. And it's so accurate, that according to the site that I was looking at, it has been nicknamed the Impossible Jump. The Impossible Jump. And that's not even the hardest jump. There are harder ones. Process that for a minute. The Impossible Jump, a required jump, is not the hardest jump you have to do to get all the cages. I don't... I... Anyway, like I said, I didn't record any of this, so let's pretend I did a montage. Okay, I did it. I did every fucking cage in the game. Done. Dusted. Dust. His Dark Materials, Mr. Dark. Let's go. So, Mr. Dark decided to hole up in Candy Chateau, which seems a little strange given his character design. I mean, you'd expect a dark, spooky, evil castle for someone called Mr. Dark, wouldn't you? Maybe he has a sweet tooth. The first level consists of a brand new game mechanic where you're sliding around at the speed of pan. I hate myself, I'm gonna kill myself. You speed up by sliding down a decline and can jump to get over pits. I mean, I, that, that's what I wrote down in my in my script, but I don't know if, what, what the fuck I'm talking about. I usually slide around, you're on a spa, you're on a pan, you're on cream. You're sliding on cream. Uh, whatever. It, fucking Rayman 1. The b best game ever made. I hate it. The next level starts on some honeycomb nougat. That's nice. You know, I've said it before, but I really love the design efforts here. This area is so hard to get to, and yet it's a completely new area with completely new tiles and backgrounds and everything. Everything's just... The artists, I like the artists. These are the good guys. The artists, this guy, this guy, this guy, these guys. The artists, they're good. They made this game good. Everyone else sucks. It's just a shame that most people will not see this lovely nougat. Shit days! It's Mr. Duck. What do you do? Oh no... It's me. This bit right here is another new gameplay element. Dark Rayman will copy your every move perfectly. Every punch you throw, every jump, even every pause. It's an interesting challenge because you can never pull ahead of him. He's always exactly two seconds behind you, and if he catches you, you're dead instantly. You just gotta make sure you don't stop moving, and also remember where you were two seconds ago. There's a few points where you have to cross over a place you previously were, and if you forgot what you did, you might just jump right into him. The third level is yet another new game mechanic. Mr. Dark appears again and zaps you with confusion magic, and now left is right and right is left on the controller. The level is simple enough to compensate for this sudden changing of basic movement controls, but there are a few enemies that really ramp up the tension. Very often I have to really pause for a moment and rejigger my brain before I jump. It sounds like I should be getting mad, but these levels, while hard, are not even close to being the hardest levels I've had to experience. In fact, they feel really fresh with all the new quirky challenges. You'd think that the last level would be the hardest one, but it's not. Maybe they're just giving me a break. Well, here it is. Mr. Dark. Um, well, I guess I'll get this power-up. What? What is... What? Um, you stole the Great Protoon and had minions capture all the Electoons and put them in cages. And then I come along, Rayman, the hero, I beat up all of your minions, I free every single Electoon, and I storm up to your castle. You make a little dark clone of me, and I defeat it without any problem. You blast me with confusion magic, but I'm still coming. I'm coming to kill you, and you've got nowhere to run. And I get here, and you're teasing me like a school bully, dangling the ultimate power over my head like an asshole. Quit it! Why do you even have the power to defeat you in your room, you idiot?
Alright, you were gonna kill me. Good. At least I'm not being patronized. Actually, please patronize me at patreon.com slash Louis Batten. Well, you know, I may only have one health, but you hopefully have a tragic illness that will kill you before you can kill me. Uh, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. and therefore give up. What are you talking about? Huh? Don't you see? You have lots of friends that believe in you. You cannot give up now, you giant dumb fuck. Impossible. Hey. I believe in you. You can do it, man. Come on. Oh, me, I'm a hippo. You're right! Oh, the Electoons came to save me. That's why I had to free all of them. So that a couple can come and help me instead of more than that. It is a bad day to be the guy that will be killed by me. Password. What the fuck? Oh, hey, it's Cunt Corona. I couldn't have done it without you. Look, it's the ultimate password. What does that mean? It means that anybody with a PAL version of the PlayStation 1 version of Rayman 1 could use it to skip to the end of the game. Tell me if that works. You've done it. Well, that's it. Rayman won. Hardest game in the universe, beaten by a small Hagrid. I didn't want to talk about the last boss because what else could I have said other than it's hard. And it wasn't as hard as Mr. Scott's, that's for sure. When you get to the point where you've collected every single cage in the game, you sort of go numb, you know. I think I blacked out for most of it, honestly. But seeing that ultimate password, seeing those credits, 
extremely satisfying. I haven't felt that good since you Patreoned me on patreon.com forward slash Louis subscribe, favorite, share, comment, like, and favorite and care. Uh, the video's over. I'm just gonna mumble about some things while the end card stuff floats around me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, like, a fucking. I'm, uh. It's like a fucking. You, you know, you, you get video games and you make videos about them. Sometimes you have a fucking breathing difficulty, illness, disease, and it's like, oh, it's hard to speak. And you have a nice cup of tea. And everything's all better for like five minutes, and then you go to the video, but you do it. Uh, was this funny? It probably wasn't. Uh, you know, fucking, uh, whatever. You, fuck you. you. You know, when I will be the king, I will tell you.